violence, only the events that led up to it. Phil, I would like to talk more about that, but we'll pause some music first. The radio orchestra, appropriately, the Song of Summer. Violet Milsom lived alone in a dingy basement flat. Her grandchildren were welcome visitors, but they couldn't get to see her often, and she was a lonely soul, with Ginger her only company. She was rather scared as well. Each night, she lodged a little message in her window to ward off strangers. At 6 p.m., as St. Paul's began to come alive, Violet's day was almost over. Tuesday, September the 3rd, at about 10 o'clock. She disturbed three young men who'd smashed a pane of glass in her door. Thursday, the 26th of September, three weeks on, and five days before she died, Violet went shopping for a chest of drawers. Get up, get up. Oh, um, I'll have a look at that one. Um, how much is that one? Uh, I think, yeah, it's a tenner, that one. The owner remembers Violet because she couldn't spare a tenner from her weekly pension and she agreed to give him a deposit. If you can't leave a fiver deposit, then we'll uh, give you a receipt and then we'll go pick up when you want. Right, I'll get you a receipt. Thanks. Next day, Friday the 27th, the owner saw Violet once again. She seemed to know this man. If it was you, or if you know who he is, please call us. Monday, September the 30th. It's pension day, and having collected her allowance, Violet went to do the weekly shopping. It wasn't hard to spend about five pounds of the 36 on Rice Krispies, tin soup, and cat food. That afternoon, a helpful neighbour was doing some gardening for Violet. It does look nice, John. When do you think you'll be able to come and finish it then? I don't think it'll be tonight. Oh, don't you come tonight? I never open my door after six o'clock, you know. Well, it'll probably be sometime tomorrow. After her neighbour left, Violet went to fetch the evening paper. As far as we know, it's the last time she left her home alive. What happened next was seen in detail by a witness sitting right across the street. Old Sam, an ageing tramp, was in his usual doorway outside the Shady Grove Cafe. And another witness, David Crowley, remembers walking past the flat that night because at about 8 o'clock, three youths came out of a garden and pushed past him. And another witness, on her way home at midnight, remembers a man appearing from a gateway near Violet's flat. Old Sam saw all of this as well. He must have done. Yet, ironically, though he can see, he doesn't understand. He lives in a world of his own. Next morning, Violet's neighbour came back to do the gardening as he'd promised. When he'd finished, he went down to the flat to borrow a broom. He discovered Violet's body. She'd been strangled, sexually assaulted, and horribly mutilated. <laughs> 